Welcome back, my name is Carrie, and today I'm gonna to show you a prefab home company with some stunning designs, just you wait. There are multiple paths I've seen companies taking into the prefab space, but one I've noticed more and more lately is what I'm gonna call a natural evolution of products. When people started working from home more a few years ago, the home office space was popping off, and I've noticed with a few of those companies, there has been a progression from that to full-on prefab homes. If you think about it, it makes sense. If you have enough people asking for an office with a kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, and a 10 foot stretch, you're gonna realize that they like what you're doing, but want a full on dwelling. The company I'm talking about is Homebase, AKA My Home Office with their line of modern prefab homes and offices. What I'm gonna do is tell you about the company, check out a few of their homes and get into their pricing. I've been following my home office for a while now and noticed they did a rebrand on their Instagram account to home base. I can't say with 100% certainty that they never had plans to offer prefab homes until people started asking for larger models after seeing their office line, but I think that's what happened and I'm glad it did. It's kind of like when I get lured in by the McPix menu and then decide I want a full on Big Mac meal. It's not like that. Like almost every other company featured on my channel, they build their units off site in a factory, deliver them to site and place them with a crane. If you look at their office models, it's easy to get an idea of the look they've got going on. And the good news is it's consistent through the entire line. I've said it before many, many times, but I am a fan of the vertical wood siding with black trim. What they're running here is a Siberian large with the option to change the color to get whatever look you might be trying to achieve. I for one think the color combo slaps and would be going ahead as is. While on the topic, the smallest of their offices is the 1.0 with a footprint of under 100 square feet and an interior that basically has space for a desk. It's noted on their website that even the 1.0 can be enlarged in both length and width and that they're happy to discuss your wishes so they can come up with a suitable solution to the situation. Nice to know front they're willing to customize. If you have a plan scribbled out on a napkin, they're probably open to it. Moving to their 2.0, you can see their progression towards dwellings with the addition of a stand-sit desk and a bed. The unit is the same size, but with convertible space, it offers more options for use. The 3.0 adds four feet to the length, and as you can see by the floor plan, that gives enough for a full-on bathroom, including toilet, sink, and shower. Their description says a workplace with its own bathroom offers business advantages. You mean like multitasking on those drawn out Zoom calls that could have been an email? No. It goes on to say that my home office is also completely suitable as a guest room. With the space saving pullout bed, you can make the bed for guests in no time. If you look at the progression from the 1.0 to the 3.0, they've gone 90% of the way to a dwelling. I'm guessing people wanted it and they answered the call. It's great. Before I get into the dwellings, if you want to get your hands on something from them, they've broken the process down into four steps. Step one is contact, logical. Step two is design proposal. Step three is offer and step four is placement. A little vague, but okay. Let's have a look at what they got going on with these homes. I'm not sure when the change took place, but I was excited to see their Instagram account go to home base because it suggests that they're leaning in on other products besides the office lineup. They've currently got a line of eight prefab homes ranging in size from 236 square feet up to over 750 square feet. Based on the number of models being offered in each segment, I guess you could argue that this might become their primary focus. I'm gonna pick a few of the models to look at here, but I think it only makes sense to start with the smallest they currently have available, which is the Box Lodge 22 with a footprint of just over 236 square feet. The exterior of this design is as advertised. It's a box with dimensions of 21 feet in length, including the built-in covered entrance by 11 and a half feet wide. The standout feature on the Box Lodge 22 is the glass on the front. The entire front of this thing is windows, which looks after the natural light throughout the space. On top of that, they put a window into the bedroom area and into the bathroom. What I like about the Box 22 is the use of space inside. You enter into the living room, the living room is open to the kitchen, then at the back of the home they've got the bathroom through a pocket door that has a shower, sink, and toilet. If you look at the cross section of the home, the bed is up in a loft above the kitchen and bathroom. I know some people, specifically the older crowd, might not be as fond of lofts, but it is a way to open up space on the ground floor and have another space that's designated for sleeping without switching from bedroom to 
bedroom to living room and back every day. The next plan from home base that I like is in the middle of the pack for size with a footprint of 538 square feet called the Single Lodge 50. The Single Lodge 50 has more going on with the exterior, similar to their offices, which I like because I think it gives it a bit more personality. The home shown has the clear pine wood facade with black trim and accents on the ends. Inside the SL50, you get a better idea of what the interior fit and finish of their dwelling models will be. It's noted that the interior walls and ceiling are finished with finished spruce. Listen to that. You can almost hear the woodies rejoicing. It definitely looks to have a cottage feel to it now, doesn't it? I had a look at the standard features and optional upgrades, and one that I would be very tempted to add depending on price is the in-floor heating. Warm floors during the winter make me feel well, simple as that. The way the Single Lodge 50 is set up, the entrance is on the end of the home, similar to the Box 22, into the living space. The living room runs into the kitchen, then there's a hall to access the rest of the home. Heading down the hall, the first door on the right is the bathroom, the second door on the right is bedroom one, and the door at the end of the hall is bedroom bedroom too. I don't want to split hairs here, but to me it would make more sense to name the largest bedroom bedroom one. Doesn't make any difference, but here we are. Above bedroom one, they've got a lofted bed making this a three bedroom home. Impressive for 540 square feet. The final home I want to look at and my personal favorite exterior by far is the double lodge. The double lodge is a two piece home connected by an interior walkway that has the exact same footprint at 538 square feet. What it comes down to with the double lodge is I think it looks really cool. That's pretty much it. I like the look of the covered porch, I like how they're offset front to back, and I like the slope of the roof. The home is split into living space and everything else. The kitchen and living room are in the larger half of the home, and then they've got the bathroom and bedroom in the second section. If you would direct your attention over to the bedroom side of the home, they've split the bathroom off into a water closet, and then a room with a shower. I can't decide how I feel about this. On the one hand, it would be nice to separate the spaces if they're shared and multiple people are trying to get ready in the morning. On the other hand, what's, what's the downside here? I guess you have to look at two doors. But is that such a downside compared to walking into a full bathroom for a shower after someone's been in there cracking rats? I don't know. You tell me. The biggest model currently available from home base is a variation of the same floor plan called the Double Lodge 70 at 753 square feet. The main difference with this plan is the size. The second module increases in size and that's enough space to include a second bedroom. I'm curious if a second bedroom changes people's thoughts on the bathroom makeup. I'm not sure the logic behind it, but the second bedroom has me leaning back towards a traditional bathroom for that specific configuration. Out of the two plans, I'd be going with the two bedroom option. Before I wrap this thing up, I am gonna check out their pricing, but keep in mind prices can and usually do change, but will be accurate at the time of posting this video. Home base, aka my home office, is located in the Netherlands, but I'll put the USD conversion somewhere on the screen. Right now, unfortunately, the only prices listed are for their office units, but I figure something's better than nothing, so they're as follows. The 1.0 has a base price of 26,000 euros, the 2.0 has a base price of 32,000 euros, and the 3.0 has a base price of 45,370 euros. Pretty safe to assume that the dwelling prices will be somewhere north of that. My home office is a company located in the Netherlands that are now offering a line of small footprint prefab homes. It seems to me they've made a recent pivot that will likely see them increasing focus on their dwellings going forward. I guess time will tell. I like the look of the double lodge models and would love to see one in person, so I'll be following along with what they're up to and posting updates right here on my YouTube channel. That's all I've got for today. If you like manufactured home videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I've got new ones coming out every single week. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.